Hello everybody, my name is Alan. I'm from CyberLab and today will be another video about Proxmox. The truth that this video will be number 12, where we're gonna show how to install clustering or how to make a clustering between two or more servers. And that you're gonna ask, well, Alan, why I want to do it and what will be useful for me? Uh, imagine that you have two servers, one that is running Proxmox and other as well running Proxmox and uh, they work separately but uh, you want to make that they work together in the case that you want to move a container for one machine or another or you want to balance your usage for one machine to another machine and the best way to do it it's a cluster this way you have uh, both systems working together and make a better overall system so if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it we're going to show you this video but first of all don't forget to leave your like consider you subscribe for the channel and Let's see how can I do it. So first thing, let me explain which kind of system that I'm work. And then after this, I can explain what configuration that you need to have in order to make everything working as expected. So here I have a two Proxmox, uh, will be two virtual machines. I'm running those virtual machines, Proxmox, Proxmox, because I don't have a two computers dedicated only for it. But ideal will be for you to have dedicated on it. So if I come here, my first Proxmox server, I can see that if I come here, my summaries I have four cores and I have a four gigabyte of run memory. If I come my second one and come summaries, I have four cores and I have 10 gigabytes of run memory. Basically, I did a little bit different proposally. The quantity of uh, CPUs will be exactly the same, but the run memory will be a little bit different. Other thing that's interesting for you to see in here, I have read uh, two containers that I create, and this one I don't have any container, just set up from zero. So here, what I should do? First thing, I need to manage or need to balance the same configuration between both uh, clusters otherwise they will have some problems if i look here i have the local zfs i have uh, the network configured so i need to check if uh, those have exactly the same kind of configuration so first i look here for this network and i can see that they using the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 so it will be between the range 1 until 254 with the same idea for ip address so I come here and check if it has the same configuration. Come here, network. And yes, the configuration for the network is exactly the same. Why I'm telling you it? Because in the previous video, I show how you configure it if you have more than one network card. And if you have this one, you need to have both servers with the same kind of configuration. Otherwise, once that you try to migrate or try to clone your container for one ma one machine for another or your virtual machine for one machine to another this will not make work or will not work at all so have this one in mind other thing that we need to look at our zfs or our folder that you have if i come here in disk i have in zfs i don't have any configured yet so let's create i'll come here and put local zfs and i put select my device and i put create in this way, they will take a little bit uh, to create, but now I have local ZFS and I have local ZFS. So both machines have uh, the same kind of uh, folders and the same kind of uh, network. Imagine that I want to have uh, a share folder or a multi point. So it's better you already do it. I can come here and create another uh, storage where it will be a multi point. If I come here, I will create exactly the same. Because it, I'm not running this uh, true NAS to make a NFS mount point, so not to do it in this stage. Now, what else I need to do? I have both servers working in the same matter and with the same configuration. Now, I can create my cluster. To create my cluster it will be quite easy. I come here in one of those servers. I suggest you to go in the first one or the one that you use more often. And I come here in data center and cluster. Now we need to create this cluster in order that in the future we can join it. So I can create the cluster and I will define a name. So we'll put a Sauber Lab C for cluster. The IP address or the cluster network will be this one and I put create. They'll take some seconds until they create. If you look, all the information, it's okay and the task has been done. So I can close it 
and I can come here and join information. Here, when I click join information, all the information for my cluster is here. So I have my fingerprint and my join information. Please be sure that uh, this join information or this information is safe and you don't share for anyone. Otherwise, everyone that have this information, that information, they can only copy it and join your network or join your Proxmox, what make your system totally unsafe. So I come here, put copy information and come here my second Proxmox or second node. Here I will come in my data center and I come here in cluster. Before I join it, you can see that my data center don't have any information here, but if I come here, close and refresh the page, now I should have my data center called CyberLab cluster. Now I come here and I will join, sorry, join cluster. I paste all this information and automatically they will already appear. My fingerprint, my pair address, and now I need to put my pair password. This password will be exactly the same that you are using the first uh, node. And I come here and put join. They will take some seconds until they say, okay, that is done and it's done the job. So I can close it. They will have permission, fail, they will take a little bit. And if I refresh this page, they will ask me to log in again. This because they log out and now you have a new system, a new cluster. So I'll put root and put my password the same way that was before. And now I already have my server lab and server lab 2 in the same cluster. It's the same thing we'll show in this one because I can access with the IP address with the first machine and also the IP address of the second machine. Now I come here and I have uh, the same history tree. I have uh, my local ZFS or my local information and I have everything. So what I can do now, I can come here, I can migrate, I can clone it, I can do a lot of activities from one server to another. Suppose that I come here my data center, summaries and here I have uh, my summaries of system. So the cluster it's cyber C and that is working I have two online and now they appear the total of CPU that I have that will be the add for the first cluster plus the second one the total of memory that I have that will be the same the first and the second and total capacity and here if you look you can see how much they're using of my usage of this capacity this one happened because in this one I have less run memory and this one I have a little bit more run memory. If I start these containers, they will show either more usage of run memory. That is totally fine and understandable. If I come here, now they will jump a little bit over for 25, 26 and continue on. Now what I can do, I can come here and put migrate. I can select the second machine and I put migrate. But let's uh, close it and check if I can clone as well. For clone, first thing that you need to do is to do a snapshot for your machine or your container. So I come here, put snapshot. I take a snapshot, I put a uh, Sauber Lab and I put take snapshot. Once that is done, the snapshot, I can come here and put to clone where they will ask you which server that you want to do. I can do one or two, which ID, I suggest you to put in the same sequence that you used to do. So it will be 202. Host name, I will put uh, uh, Debian 2. Resource pool, we're not gonna do it. Snapshot, we're gonna decide the snapshot that we did. And then you only define which target store that you want and you clone it. I will not be able to do it because I'm using virtual machines and these virtual machines, they have some limitations. So everything that you did in your, in your proper server, they will be able to do it. But if you're using virtual machines, they will not work at all because of the system. So I hope that you guys like this video. In this way, if you follow all the videos for Proxmox, now you should have your Proxmox, have one or more virtual machines, one or more uh, containers, and everything working in harmony with different users and different uh, networks depending on your configuration. And for the end, now you can have more than one server work together and this way you can migrate information from one server to another without any issue. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.